Our first quarterfinal is down, and now it is time for number two. Joining us once again on the desk is Flea and Ketchup. Gentlemen, we just saw Kilson take out Dramas at a pretty convincing 2-0, and now we move on to our next quarterfinal. One of these players looking to secure their semifinal spot. It's going to be Razy versus Avic, a pretty spicy one, if you ask me. I think a lot of people have been just keeping their eyes on this matchup. Uh, oh. If you look at the schedule, that's like everyone's just fixating on that this is going to be a good match. Uh, it's two of the best players that we have out there. Lots of respect being shown. So many people this weekend, when they're asked, who do you think is going to take this? Razy seems to be this kind of recurring His name's answer. popping up more, huh? Something about just, you know, the, the recent form that razy has been on. Seems that during the practice games, uh, I can only assume that razy has been doing quite well on LAN because, I mean, Everyone's talking about him, and that's got to be for good reason. Same goes for Avak, right? Yeah. I mean, we got to see him play against yeah. Sirius yesterday, I believe, and he looked absolutely... Or no, he played Psyche yesterday. It was Razy who beat Sirius, but he was looking absolutely fierce as well. We, I think you and I costed that one together, yep. and we were just talking about just the resurgence of the classic Avak aggression. So calculated, so deliberate, leaving up items to chase his yes. opponents halfway across the map to finish them off. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, I mean, it really was kind of uh, clearly a difference in how he was playing and approaching it versus we've seen others in the past. So uh, I think both of these players, huge contenders. We also talked a little bit about how Avic, you know, he, he he we've seen him online. He, he's a beast, but he loves that land environment. He loves True. another one of those, like, I love the high stakes of uh, what's on the line here. And it doesn't get any more high stakes in quarterfinals, right? This either secures your spot in a semifinal versus another super difficult opponent, or it means that you're gonna travel that weathered road down in the lower bracket, which means that you've got a lot of work ahead of you. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm excited. What do you what do you think about uh, Avic Ketchup? I think that Avex just, I mean, the superstar, right? Avex, one of those players that kind of just oozes charisma in person, that comes out in the form of confidence in the game itself. Every time you watch him play, uh, highly volatile, super fun to watch someone that just has that degree of fearlessness, but with the experience behind him is able to back up so many of those major, major pushes where someone does something like perfect aggression, someone goes, wow, that's that's an Avex would do. Yeah, You know, the, uh, the original of the play style, you would say, but honestly, Honestly, I just cannot wait to get into the picks and bans. I, I want to see what we're looking at. I want to see if Razy's done anything maybe against the grain here. I want to see if Lan has somewhat influenced those decisions. Because yeah. when, we, when we look at what Razy will pick, often you can kind of know what you're getting into. You know, a little bit experimental, a little bit cheeky there, a, you know, a lot of clutch picks. But now we're on Lan, I'm, I generally wonder if we're going to see clutch at all. I, I really wonder, because that, that's a gamble here. Yeah, I mean, we've barely seen any heavy so far, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be up in the air whether or not Razy's going to pick him. And now, as we both... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to briefly talk about the match history. I had a second to yeah, look into do, it do, just do. between yeah. these two. And I just want to say that they have played a whole lot of matches between one another because they have been in the Pro League pretty much from the start, right? And if we look at their most recent six games, Avic has actually won four of them, which I thought was somewhat surprising, including the most recent one. So Razy absolutely doesn't have this one in the bag. It's going to be a difficult fight for either one of these players. Interesting. Well, but we came to the desk and we're like, I don't have the picks and bands. This is going to... Flea's like, I don't have the picks and bands. <laughs> Let's take a look at the picks and bands so we can finally see what's coming out here from both. I, You know, we were in lobby and Insomnia was there and I was like, there's no way that Insomnia... But <laughs> sure enough, Avic is going to pick Insomnia and we're going to have, of course, Razy picking up Ruins followed by a final decider, should we need it, on Veil. Uh, taking a look at our champions, who wants to give a shot at breaking those down? I mean, there's been a recent amount of respect being shown on Razy. I think that a few months ago, uh, when people were talking about you know who the, the strongest Slash players were, I don't think Razy would ever really come up in those conversations because it wasn't the champion that he used all that much. Right. And when he did, it kind of looked okay. You know, that there was rough around the edges, I think I would say. But as of very recently, Razy liking to undertake new ranked mode challenges and picking Slash on every single map regardless has kind of made Razy realize, hey, look, this champion's kind of good on some of these maps to the point where it's now one of his most dangerous picks and one that I'm not surprised has been being banned out immediately. But again, no clutch, no heavies. 
This is, this is the LAN experience. We've had so much information gathered from the last two days that people just, they want to stay safer. It's too much of a risk at the moment. I mean, this is just a, such a stark contrast when you compare it to this, the weeklies, right? On, online. Right. Every single time that someone had the opportunity to ban a champion against Razy from the get-go, what was it? Clutch, Clutch, right? You just can't get around it. But so far, Avic very clearly going the opposite direction and saying, no, 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 Slash, that is the champion that I don't want to go up against today. Now, other than that, Insomnia starting it off, Strog versus Anarchy, Medium Champion versus Allied, both very mobile, staying in the theme of seeing more and more of that on Insomnia. Map 2, Ruins of Sarnet, again, very classic. We saw it earlier today as well, right? I, I mean, Spice I still have a little Nyx. trauma from that one because oh, that, like, I mean, it was 12-0, Zeniku, completely destroying chain with that visor i, I just don't yeah. have a good feeling of that one towards havoc and then lastly veil of naf where we are going to see the bj with the dual wield the burst damage versus yep. the ice and this is one of the few maps where ice is regularly picked because that turret such a good tool to get yourself information to lock down those teleporter exits to divide your opponent's attention let's see how this one goes down yeah, uh, and we got a little bit here until uh, the match gets started. But you know, we we mentioned it the the ruins game between uh, Chain and Sanaku. It's so much favored Sanaku in that in that case. And I would imagine that you know Razy is absolutely going to play uh, in a similar in a similar fashion. Going to expect to not see him popping his piercing sight. You know, right off of the spawn, maybe I don't know, but really using it more to combat what Avic might have. So, I, I mean, I think uh, predictions are getting tougher and tougher, gentlemen. And I, you know, we're we're out of like the realm of two O's. I think we did say that it was very possible. We saw a two one in the previous matchup with Kilson and Dramas. That was proven to be uh, not right as Kilson took that with a two zero. But now Razy versus Avic. Razy has looked, uh, you know, maybe some of the best form we've seen him in a while. Hmm. Avic, he likes to be here in the land environment. He's comfortable. He's been in the highest of pressure situations. I'm not sure that there are any nerves associated with that. But every player also has, like, players that they don't necessarily enjoy playing against, players that they might have some trouble with. Where do you think these two stack up in all of that? I want to say 2-1 Razy still feel like Razy might have the upper hand. We've been talking to a lot of players behind the scenes, right? And everyone's been saying, Razy is looking so good. Razy and Wenger are two of the names that keep popping up in terms of the players that have the best preparation behind them, are feeling the most comfortable on land. Now, of course, we've seen what everyone here is capable of, including yep. Avic, but I, I, I have a feeling that goes towards Razy. Yeah. I really have to agree. Um, it, it's mostly coming down, really, to the information that we're getting this weekend. Uh, you know, we know that Avec and Razy have had these really good matches in the past, but when we're talking about the right now, Razy just seems to be putting a little bit of fear into people. And that often means dominant matches and fantastic practice games. That, if it carries itself over into the tournament setting, Razy could very much just sort of push forward here and become really the one to watch for the whole weekend. Absolutely. You know, we have only seen in the last four matches 2-0 uh, results. And you, know, you get to the quarterfinals, and that's typically the, the area where you're kind of thinking, all right, this is where we're going to start to see those battles go all three games. So I do kind of expect that, but also think that both players capable of pulling out a 2-0, believe it or not. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a tough one to call. Still got a, a little bit here before we hop in the next one. Our next quarterfinal, just as a little preview for those of you out there that are, uh, you know, wondering what's next, Rafa versus Maxter. Maxter looking absolutely phenomenal, uh, as we saw him earlier today. But, you know, Rafa is Rafa. Yeah, Rafa is Rafa. What more do you have to say, right? What more is there to say? No man has secured the Quake Pro League belt as often as he has. The champion, the professor, a triple threat no matter who he's up against. And today, his first opponent is going to be Maxter after taking down Toxic yesterday. And it was interesting, right? We did the interview with Maxter saying that he's actually feeling pretty confident yeah. about going up against Rafa because he says that he knows how Rafa plays, he knows how he plays himself. 
himself, and he feels like they're a very good match. Yeah, I mean, we, we also talked about this idea that, you know, as both, all the players are kind of coming into it and the initial brackets were released, you started to get an idea, okay, I could be playing this player, I could be playing this player. Well, thinking back to even what Avic said, hey, look, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to play amazing players all the way through. That's yep. still, that doesn't necessarily mean you still can't potentially prepare for what you might be up against. So uh, certainly a level of confidence there. Even said like, yeah, I think I might be able to do it. Would love to see those words backed up. That'd be a, a tall order. But the other quarterfinal match that we'll see today that will determine our semifinals that will be played tomorrow is Wenger versus Zinniku, which is another pretty wild matchup. Dream matchup if you Matchups of this caliber, and we're not even on the finals day. Right. Just just putting it out there. Yep. And again, to remind everyone at home, there are two streams going on right now. Every single match is being covered as we speak. So we've got the matches that are here. Uh, currently, we're currently waiting on, obviously, Avec versus Razy. So as soon as we're good to go, we'll be jumping in and checking that out, just getting some settings finalized, I think. But then there's the B stream. So some of the sort of remaining elimination matches that we're going through, all of that can be found on the B stream as well. So have two tabs open. That's what I'm trying to say. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I, w I mean, we've seen Yup leave us earlier yeah. today. I yeah. was also just casting over on the B stream where we saw Sip take down Buckster. Very, very close series. It was just a major contrast, right? First game, one of the players was hitting 60% rail, the other one was hitting 10%. Second map, Ouch. it was the complete opposite. And then all of a sudden, Buckster was hitting 10% wow. rail and Sip was dominating it. And it all came down to that final map. Sip ultimately walked away with the win 2-1 overall on Insomnia was the decider. So even the B stream got some excellent matches. And of course, arguably even more important because it determines who goes home. And then after our quarterfinal match, that's when we're starting to get into a lot of those elimination matches. At yeah. that point, every match that you see right here on the mainstream will be a match for your tournament life. Uh, you win, you advance on, you stay alive in the lower bracket, you lose. Unfortunately, your tournament life is over. And then... Uh, get in as much practice with these great players as you possibly can. Uh, but yeah, so still two more quarterfinal matches coming at you right after this one, Razy versus Avic, and then we'll be shifting gears going over to lower bracket. Now tomorrow, just a little, little preview there, we'll be switching to best of five. Finals, of course, best of seven with the one map advantage. If you watched a Pro League Finals, you probably understand how that works. We'll explain it all later tomorrow, but Every single match tomorrow with only six players remaining is going to be a pretty wild roller coaster. Which, to be fair, if you go into the realms of champion picks, we're going to start to see how they operate on land because once we enter the realms of more matches to play, you have to play more champions, which yes. is a very and strange match, yeah. development because, you know, we, if yeah. we're looking at Death Knight being kind of like the last, he's all that's left, so I'll go on, I'll pick him, and then that was always it for a while. And then now in this really strange twist of fate, we're going into a position where players are likely only going to start picking heavy champions because they have to. Right. And then we get to see, yes. well, why are players not picking them? And then you can see them get LG'd into the all the way down, which we did see a little bit earlier um, between Yup and uh, Saigib. It was the second map, basically Saigib hitting a straight 50% LG. And it kind of felt like that was the only weapon he was using on Veil. Vale. I mean, it really has been remarkable, no? Where's the keel been at? I, Where, where's yep, scale at? Yep. Where's clutch? Uh, Sorlag where's Sorlag? Sorlag? Doesn't oh. exist in the game. We right. haven't I, seen any of them. I think them. Rafa is the only one that uh, we've seen here on the main stage that's that's at least played scale. And it was on Veil. So it's like, at least if you're going to do that, Veil makes like the most sense because yep. there's not as much scope for, for things to get dodged or moved around. And at least the overall utility of a scale bearer will fit that map really well. But, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that is because we are currently waiting for this match to open. But I actually do believe, unless this is a test, I, I don't can so. see the map loading no, no. in. We're so going we're into good. it. Gentlemen, enjoy yourselves. Insomnia, the first map for our second quarter final of the day. Thank you all for staying with us. Had some technical difficulties to sort out, but we are about to kick things off. Quarterfinal match, Razy versus Avic, Maestro versus Endpoint. This is one you're not gonna wanna miss. People have been keeping their eyes on this matchup for some time and for good reason. They always have fantastic matches with each other. Two of some of the absolute cream of the crop is fair enough to safely. And the new stuff, the insomnia, the latest map joining the Pro League. Let's begin. Starting it off on the perspective of Avic. See what he can do with that Strog. 
mentioned earlier, two very mobile champions. Strock has a stack advantage, plus he has the peeker. But Anarchy, of course, has that top up, that health boost, the injection, plus the air control. Opening rail does not hit its mark there, but the second one does. Razy doesn't really take any damage in return, so a bit of a basic exchange as we kick start. But the difference between Heavy and Mega, I don't know if it's long enough for him to challenge, though, because Anarchy is going to have to cover a, a significant amount. And actually, no, playing the patient game, looking like he was going to... Hmm, interesting stuff there, actually. Yeah, there's, uh, I believe, something yeah. is wrong. I, I had seen Razy not move. <laughs> I'd seen Razy not move up there and kind of like the peripheral vision. And I was kind of like, uh, either he's waiting there to like ambush on Heavy or maybe he was going a different way. But then the moment he was like stopped, I'm like, yes, I'm Yeah, it's something. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> Take two. Boom. Clearly still some issues to, to be sorted out with the players behind us. Uh, not quite sure what's going on, but I'm sure that we'll find out any moment now. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get another lobby restart just to make restart. sure that everything is performing exactly as needed for such a high-stake, important matchup. It's a shame when these kind of delays happen, but at the end of the day, this is a very serious tournament. Absolutely. You know, this is there, there's, there's not going to be any do-overs here. Yeah, you've got a second tournament life in lower bracket, but neither of these players want to be in lower bracket no. at all. So it's one of those things where you're stuck with us for a little bit longer, but rest assured, as soon as everything's good to go, and ironed out, we will be jumping into Insomnia and starting things off strong. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to talk about in that opener yet because Razia had just essentially been been sitting idle several seconds Saw into the it, map. Though, you know, a good like 30 seconds. I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe it's a new strategy, right? You just take your hands off the mouse and you just completely throw your opponent off. We've seen Cooler do it, the Cooler dodge. It's it's incredible to go up against. So uh, who knows? But no, this definitely was a bit of a technical issue that we are now trying to resolve before we will continue and resume the very first map in this series. Hey, man, it was going to happen eventually. Yeah, uh, it had to. I mean, as, as far as day ones go, day one actually went quite well. There was there was like no substantial delays. We didn't have yes. to cut to like a. We didn't have to do that thing where we're like we're having some technical issues. We'll cut to a break. I'm I'm not going to say anything though because there's a possibility we might have to do that at some point. Maybe not now. <laughs> we are still trying to fix it through. But you know, day one was quite good, wasn't it? We it had really of, we was. Had a lot of good matches. We had a lot it, of good it, matches. It really was. Yeah, I can already imagine Twitch chat going, "Oh man, these casters! Like the players are ready to go. They want to go, but the caster. We just love to talk so so much. God, we're I wish these two casters up. would shut up so the match could start. <laughs> you know the common misconception of productions behind the scenes going, well, well, hang on a minute, I'm not going to start the match. They're on a really good point. Let me Absolutely. just finish what they're talking about and then we'll start the lobby. Actually, speaking of which, speaking of which I see the lobby in. has resumed. So I'm, hopefully. I'm not promising nothing, but if it works, <laughs> we're in a great position. Because remember, this is a high stakes match of two of some of the very best. So let's see if this one works out. Thank you all very much for joining us and sticking with us during this. It's going to be take two. Cut. <laughs> Both players happily jumping around in the warm-up, so that means that we are kicking it off again on FX point of view. Still on the strog, nothing has changed in that regard. Oh, I like what he did right there. Immediately denying that small armor. He knows that Razy is playing a light champion, wants to make sure that he can't pick up that small armor first, then loop back around to get that overstack going through the heavy. So Avic very proactive in denying resources to begin with. Just had to check Razy's point of view just to make yes. sure everything was okay right as we started off. But being nice and patient at the moment, Razy, kind of doing an element of what he started with, which was kind of playing that patient game up near Teleporter Exit. A fight will break out, but Razy kind of having the wrong weapon for that exchange, just having a rocket out. Here comes Avec around the corner, sticking to the rocket and getting a little bit of LG. That was a nice little combo, though, but misses the Pika. That's going to be a little bit of bonus damage. Razy forced to retreat now, and... A nice kind of element of respect from both sides. Neither player wants to push too far forward because, I mean, they're completely even split on health. Uh, I just don't think this is, you know, this is not the opportunity to go in just yet. But with Heavy being the next objective flee, we'll see what happens here. Clearly, a lot of respect between these two greats of Quake. <laughs> Heavy will be taken by Razy. Going for a rocket jump, you could see Avec heard it, immediately flipped his aim up, was expecting Razy to come through that hallway up there, but instead, Went all the way around to get positioning on the Mega, but it is Razy who does most of the damage with that Railgun, forces Avic on the retreat. Avic's forced into a rather interesting position, because here comes Razy full speed ahead. And that will be first blood of this series between Avic and Razy. Razy not only getting that frag, but putting himself in a position to take the heavy as well. 
And there goes the Pika at exactly the same time, swapping to that shotgun. Avec, more than likely, yeah, able to slip back there and steal the heavy away. Razy now forced to go for the other major item, but I don't think he's too devastated because you've got that light armor nearby and he's still nice and stacked. Not so much, now that rail just connected. And that is why, if you're Anarchy, you want to go for the heavy first and foremost. You've got that pocket mega on you at all times with that active ability, so you want to prioritize the armors as even as a light champion. You start with none of that. Funny you should mention that, mate, because right as we say that, heavy in position, of which Razy's going to be able to take it. And we go straight back into the forever patient middle section. Now, this is where the first fight broke out of this map, and I'm certain this won't be the last time it happens. Catches around the corner, and there's that opening rail, just out of nowhere. But that instant movement of the Anarchy, being able to just smell blood and, and dedicate straight away to some kind of chase or some kind of fight. Three seconds now until heavy, but Crazy's doing that thing that top-level players do, right? They know the item's there, and they're in position, so pushes forward, tries to get some bonus damage first. Didn't quite work out, however, was still able to back up, pop the inject, and at the same time, heavy is going to belong to Razy for another time. Avec, though, delaying yeah. the Mega, it seems like, and does Razy know that? I don't think so, no. Drazy will not have been able to have heard the item been picked up from that distance, so Avec now has an information advantage, because he probably has a pretty exact timing on the heavy. Nice little bit of damage there as well. Unfortunately, eats a bad rail. Pushes in, should be able to secure the item. Oh, Razy's LG so strong, but the rail! Clutch! The switch! Netting Avec the frag, tying it all back up. Avex drop down was a pretty well placed one too. I'm assuming he had a fair idea over Razy spawn, so doesn't want to grab that armor and just completely give up a rail for your troubles. No doubt Razy would have pushed in and taken that one. One frag apiece, but as we said before, there's so much respect between the two of these. Avex clutch little rail swap, keeping him in the fight. I'm so close to being 2-0 Razy. But again, heavy. Razy, you're forced to retreat. Here comes Avex now, getting fully stacked. And with this Mega about to spawn, Razy had to disengage and get some weapons. He couldn't have gone for Mega there. He just wasn't equipped. And this is the payoff of Avex delaying the item, right? By offsetting that Mega in the previous rotation, he is now able to string both of them together. Razy, as you just said, unable to challenge for it and Avec leaving it up even longer, knowing that he might take some damage here in this fight with Razy, but that he's got the Mega to his back. Now both items almost in sync once again. Avec delaying that Mega pickup so long that the items are once again equalized. Equalizing the items, though, one would think that might benefit Razy a little bit because Avic was the one kind of leading so, yeah. the charge, the one that was in control and forcing Razy to disengage. So now having this opportunity to kind of almost completely trade item for item means that the next fight could be relatively even, especially if there's an inject and especially if Razy prioritizes the heavy, of which, to be fair, it looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Indeed, that was a bit of an awkward fight for Avec. He, like, he, he didn't take enough damage to warrant picking up the Mega right away, but Razy just kind of hovered around there in a position where Avec couldn't fire at him either. And so before he knew it, the items were basically in sync once again. So yeah. that indeed does favor Razy. Can we talk about the fact that they were both delaying their item as well? Yeah. <laughs> At the same time. Same and idea. Because of which there's really only a five second split between the two of them. And I guess we'll, we'll grow to see if that means anything now. That five minute warning, an extremely low scoring game. But with how patient both of these players have been, it's no surprise. But where do we go from here? Avec has exclusively lived in this center point because you get rail angles all over the place. Granted, he has to get himself a little bit of extra ammo soon, otherwise he's going to be in a spot of bother. But that opening up rocket, Razy going right into it. Looks like the inject is ready, but there's the peaker instantly. The defensive rail to shut it down. And Avec, for the first time in a couple of minutes, starts to move around. You know, he's been so content just gathering information and playing that, you know, chip him down, bit by bit game plan. But you wonder what's going to happen from here, though. Four minutes. Still all tied up. Heavy will be taken by Razy. Not sure if Avec heard the pick up from that distance. Always oh, leaving up Mega to try and do some damage. This is that aggression that Wheat and I were talking about, Ketchup. Just not playing the items as much as he is playing the man. But that has the capacity to backfire tremendously, and that's exactly what just happened. Razy was able to pick up Heavy and Mega scot free. Didn't pay any price for that. 
Oh, the rocket jump doesn't quite work out the way that he wanted it, but still he's got the resources to work with. Avic in a bad spot, especially after eating that rail. He's got to run for his life. Razy, can he chase him down? One rail will do it. Avic down to 36 points of health. Razy, can he find the angle? Not quite. But he does clean it up in the end. That was such a shame for Avec, and even more so that giving up those items as Razy goes and builds himself for a, a rather significant push that we saw just work out perfectly. Right as Avec's trying to pepper down those vertical rockets, he only had two shots and then he ran out. So yeah. the one weapon you would have been able to use to at least get some damage that might have stopped the push, he ran out of ammo for. But so much shotgun, not enough to finish it though, because Razy picks up and he is just about to get an inject. So I don't think that luck, lack of stack is going to be too much for him. Now Razy has to go full on defensively. Now having picked up that Mega is going to help somewhat, but he was in a very dire spot just before that. And now it's all on Avic. The Polish Prince, he's on the hunt. Razy still making an appearance before Heavy, the LG on LG, but Razy Shaft reigns supreme. He gets himself a frag and the Heavy as a reward. And with how long it took to get just one frag apiece and actually start to break away, the fact we have two minutes left is a problem for old Avec. Because yep. Razy, the momentum is now on his side, so is the stack, so is the weapon, so is the control. I mean, everything's working out perfectly. Even down here, Avec is sitting down near where the jump pad is with the rail angle. <laughs> What can he do? You know, you've got Razy now cycling across the map and he's picking everything up and he's now going to push in and probably went in for the gauntlet <laughs> right. Play. Oh my god! The second Razy goes in for the gauntlet, you know that we've reached that part oh of the map. Oh my god! Razy, you absolute animal. This is the quarterfinal against one of the absolute best players in the league. Avic had the better seat going into this tournament and Razy's just like, Oh, I see you. You're in stasis mode using the peeker. I'm just gonna ignore that ability altogether, get up close and personal, and gauntlet to, to your doom. Now, ultimately, it ended up being a suicide with the rocket, but still, Razy, supremely confident, extremely on point. Best case scenario for Razy, really, because that's gonna be a plus one or a minus one, no matter how you look at it. And at the same time, uh, Razy said it himself in his interview. I like to hit people with the pummel because it is fun. It sure and look, is. We've also, there's an element of, you know, some of you, oh, why does he do the gauntlet? It seems so rude. The reality is he really enjoys doing it. And that fun can be externalized in these competitive matches where if you're having a good time with what you're doing, there's an element of your gameplay that will be quite loose, quite free flowing. If you're, if your free-flowing gameplay is of the caliber of Razy, I mean, he's just going to be comfortable. You know what I mean? And if he's comfortable, then he's in the zone. He's he sure is. It. And that shoddy blast is going to secure it. Avex still going to secure himself at least a few frags towards the end. But ultimately, Razy, very strong performance, especially in that second half of the map catch-up. The second he had the chance to break away, it was just too much of a mammoth task to conquer it. But it, I think it's, a, for me, a testament to the patience. The fact that, you know, we'll play careful, we'll play safe, and then that one opportunity lands, we'll just embrace it. You know, yeah. Both hands. I do have to say that I don't think that Avec played a flawless game by any means. There were mistakes in terms of the tactics, in terms of the decision-making process. We know that Avec likes to chase down his opponent, leave up items, play around the enemy, rather than go for the resources. But if that goes wrong, it can backfire big time. And that is what happened on several occasions, right? Avec perfectly positioned to secure the Mega, but instead he tries to go after Razy. And before you know it, Razy uses that inject, realizes exactly what Avic is going for, races around the map, and all of a sudden he's got Mega, he's got Heavy, he's got everything. And Avic's like, wait, th that was my position just, just 20 seconds ago. How did this happen? So that kind of aggression, it may have worked well yesterday playing against the likes of Saige, but today against Razy, it really isn't working out the same way. There was that particular moment about halfway through the map when Kind of Avec was kind of just holding one of those angles and then in doing so kind of pushed forward to try and get some damage, I think it was, mm. running past where Mega was. And in doing that, Razy kind of loops around, just kind of picks it up and then yeah, ambushes exactly. you from behind. I mean, I'm like, I can only assume, like, could Avec hear him or something? Like, did he just, it couldn't have been that he didn't know it was coming because there, there's only so many ways you can push forward into that room, but. <sighs> What a change of momentum that one moment was, because then a clean frag is picked up, 
off the back of two items picked up unchallenged. And that really built the means for Razy to take things the way he did afterwards. Absolutely. Now, brief glance at the statistics over here. 46% Railgun for Avec versus 39% LG by Razy. It's clear what these players favored. Avec tried to keep his distance somewhat, chase Razy down with the Railgun. Of course, has a lot to do with his opponent being an anarchy, whereas Razy was much more aggressive, right? Much more upfront, using the injection to close the gap, use the LG, the super shotgun to great effect at times. And ultimately, Razy ran away with the score towards the end. Different game now, though. We're jumping into Ruins of Sarnath. The Nyx versus the Visor will be Razy with the extra information as that will be the Visor for him. But then the safety, right? The, the element of having to catch someone twice, being able to be nice and slippery yes. and super hard to pin down with Avec. Avec will need to have a really good game to make this work. Nyx can feel like quite a volatile pick at this level because she's so squishy and so easy to frag when she hasn't got Ghost Walk. But at this level of play, you know, they know what they're doing. It's just against Razy with this much momentum that he always seems to have. It's going to be harder than ever. Sure is. And we'd mentioned this earlier, right? We just saw this matchup earlier today. Zeniku absolutely taking down Chain on this map with these exact picks. Maybe maybe it's a Maestro thing, you know? Pick the Visor against the Knicks. I mean, it's not an uncommon pick by any means, but maybe this Team is something meeting. that they've really, you know, worked on, that they've practiced on, that they've figured out works exceptionally well against certain opponents, and that is just a, a game plan of the team going into this. So let's see if Avec will fare better on Nyx than Chain did earlier, who knows? Well, it looks like we're going to be loading in real soon. Thank you all so much for joining us. We've gone through one map only of this series so far. But remember, on this second day, we're still in best of three territory. So if Raze is able to take this, then we'll be moving forward versus Avec. Many of us predict a 2-1, so this could be the opportunity for Avec to turn things around. It's just with how this particular matchup has been faring so far, the Visor versus the Knicks on a map like this, we've only, could be by pure coincidence, but we've seen Visor do very well so far. So if one person's gonna pull off the kind of opposite effect, then why not none other than Avec, as we'll be jumping into this next map real soon. Warm-up's coming to a close, and in 10 seconds, we're good to go. Flea, it's time. Avec has to win this one to continue his run through the upper bracket. Let's see if he's capable of doing so. Visor, in many ways, is a, is a hard counter pick to Nyx, right? Because that piercing side completely negates the Ghost Walk, reveals the invisible. So let's find out how Avec attempts to counter that. Razy leaving up that Mega for a massive amount of time. One benefit Avic's going to have is by hitting that drop down rail from that location, Avic wasn't really standing in a particularly common area of where heavy spawns. So, uh, fair assumption that that was a, a piercing sight one. So, yeah. at the very least, Avic knows that, hang on a minute, I have a few seconds of leeway up until Razy picks up those hourglasses anyway. But the rail 1v1, Razy hits yet another one. But now the opening rail's been hit, there's not going to be any pressure for Razy to pop that piercing sight early. If he can save it if necessary, and in this case, he'll find the spawn. And that is another devastating use of oh. Piercing Sight, is getting a frag without needing to use it, and then just straight up seeing where they spawn. There is indeed quite a lot of strategy that goes into using that Piercing Sight, right? In some players, in some matchup, they pop it the moment that they have it available. But in other circumstances, you might want to hang on to it, especially when playing against the Knicks, to negate that ability of hers. Now Razy landing a good rail, but Avic is the one who drops down onto the heavy first, and now it's a race for Mega. Both players making an appearance. Razy takes a rail, but is able to slip on through, secure himself the Mega. And now both players similarly stacked, with Avic having a slight advantage after having picked up that heavy. Avic wasn't really in a position to force it. I mean, yeah, I know he'd hit a little bit of damage, but he only had a nail gun and a rail. So in most circumstances, Avic's like, yeah, I think I'll back off and take that LG and build myself up a little bit. If he's in position for this heavy, of which he definitely is, he's now quite healthy. Forcing the Ghost Walk, though. Okay, hang on a minute. The Mega does get picked up. These rails are going to be so important to nullify that. Oh, nice reaction by Avic. Perfect read. He figured that Razy was gonna jump up on that broken piece of wall to get that high up angle. And he countered it perfectly. And now Razy is the one sent to the outskirts of the map. 
cannot contest for any of the major items just yet. Has to try and pick up some of the smaller ones, but Avic is right there, pummeling down on him. Good thing that he's had the Ghost, or rather the Piercing Side, available to him. And that really is what kept him alive. If he didn't have the side up in that situation catch-up, I think Crazy would have been done by now. Still stuck in a scary position. Using those pillars because it is going to be the only thing keeping him afloat. They trade it. Oh, and there's Avec catching a rail. The Clutch. ghost walk just in case, but yeah, he cannot fight for that heavy. I mean, good that he got the rail, but it's, there's no way on earth he's fighting that. Wow. Once again, pretty close, but that reaction from Avec just flicking down like that instantly. Buying himself some breathing room from Razy, who was positioned quite nicely to do a whole lot of damage, even by just using that standard machine gun. Now Heavy is the next major item. Both players, decent in terms of stack. But Avic realizes that he's out positioned, that he doesn't have anything to really drop down with. And so we, he will just prioritize the Mega instead. No, Hang on a minute though, there's the ghost walk. This is a risky fight to take, has to put so much faith on the rocket and is able to do just that. I was going to point out the fact that he had no LG ammo to his name, so taking that mid-range fight was a risky one. But how is that for confidence in your rockets? It absolutely wow. was. And how is that for confidence in your rail? Razy just jumping clean across the gap, railgun in hand, making Avec pay for that transgression of earlier. And now Avec does not have the Ghost Walk available with those rockets. That was a direct. Razy misses an important rail that would have been the kill shot. Can he find the angle? Yes, but not before Avec secures himself a small armor. Surely Razy is not going to let him escape. Oh, catch up that so bad. That final rocket. Yeah, oh. exactly. Exactly what I was thinking of. That final rocket brought Razy down to such a low amount of stack that Avic was able to chase him down from the spawn. Yeah, I don't particularly think that piercing sight really helped him there. All he did was see his incoming death. Yeah. Uh, however, on that note, three for three. The on-the-spot capitalizations are thoroughly impressive so far, and that's one of the things that can make both of these players so scary is that they know what they need to do. It doesn't matter if they've been fragged or not. They've, they've got your stack in their mind all the time. So yeah, I've just gone down, but I know where you are. I know where I've spawned and all I need to do is just rush in once again, pick up a nice little bit and then we're good to go. It's a scary kind of opponent to fight, I imagine, because you're not safe even after you've secured a frag. Good use of the piercing side there as well. Was unable to get any sort of damage, but that's not what he was going for. He wanted information. And by using the ability, he was able to pinpoint the exact moment that Avic picked up the heavy, even though Razy was on the other side of the map. So at least he knows when the major items are going to spawn now. Surpass that halfway point here. In this thing. You can really feel how close things are currently bearing. Neither player wants to overcommit just yet. Avec looking to cut off the potential escape points. What a lovely, lovely position to stay there. Razy thinking he can be a little bit cheeky and double back. Avec ready for every single position there. That's good stuff. And now Razy's kind of stuck unless he can escape right now, which he's definitely trying to do. Avec's not going to be able to stop this mega. And just like that, both of us are back into a situation where, right, Got to play it careful, play it smart. Wow, the aggressive push there with the LG as Razy forces Avic down south. Very good shot, Razy. He was out of control for a little while there, but that should help him out considerably, at least until this heavy spawns. Is he gonna drop for it? He will. Right in between two rockets, this is huge. And it's Razy who gets away with the heavy. Avic, the most minute of missed times right there was hoping to be able to pick up the item and then Ghostwalk, but ultimately he had to pop it just beforehand. And this is giving Razy a perfect opportunity to push. This should be a frag, and indeed it is. Now looking at some of the accuracies here, catch up 51% rail by Razy. So hot. Kind of goes to show the high risk nature of a champion like Nyx with Avic so far. Avic trying to make that call to run forward, take the heavy, then pop the ghost walk and escape safely. But, you know, sometimes it just will not work out that way. And in doing so, gave up the heavy. Put himself in a position where Razy wouldn't really be too worried about it, to be honest with you. Because now, two frags on the board. This was so careful and patient. And all it took was one mishap. Again, really going back into the 
uh, description of how brutal of an eSport Quake is because one mistake and it can be so, so devastating. Also worth noting is the use of the rockets and the LG. Avic has barely even touched the lightning gun, hitting just 14% LG. That's next to nothing. Meanwhile, Razy has only landed three rockets. So both of these players are very, very decisive in the weapon that they want to use. Exchange range from a distance, and then Avic wants to get up close and personal with rockets, while Razy wants to stick back a little further and take these LG fights because of his higher starting stack. And this is a very scary moment now. Avec stuck with not much stack, can only just take more than one rail. And even if he takes a light armor so far, he's still not going to be in an amazing position. Does have the ghost walk, and this will be a safe pickup on the light. As you can see on your side of the screen there, Razy in position for the heavy. Avec was really kind of doing everything he can and actually doing a good job. Knowing that Razy is likely to take heavy, I'm going to use this opportunity to just build up my regular armor stack. Because now I've got Mega, now I've got a Ghost Walk, I've got all the weapons I could ever need. I like that bit of patience there. You know, Take that 30 seconds or so to get yourself ready for the next fight. Yes. Because it could be the fight that decides the fate of your upper bracket. 90 seconds for two frags. Very possible. Oh, that's a good opening rocket. He knows exactly where Razy is. He heard him, but Razy slips out of the room, escapes that rail, and even picks up the heavy. That's bad news for Avec. He was really hoping to do some more damage in that exchange. Yes, he will be able to walk away with the Mega, cleanly so, but Razy is being slippery. Oh, he's gonna hear the bounce pads. That's a bit of a ghost walk wasted. Razy wasting no, with the LG. No okay, no! Avic is going to call GG's a minute left. I mean, I don't know what you can do. He'd delay the spawns. I mean, maybe just see this way too much, but the aggressive ghost walk, it's so often like the tool players use when it's yes. like, right, I need to surprise. I need to get something on deck. I'm going to go close range. Boom, done. We've seen it all weekend, actually, but it Razy going through the safest option. The jump pad, you hear it and you chase. Razy's like, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted you to hear. That's the problem, right? It was just unfortunate timing by Avec. The, the decision to use the Ghost Walk there was perfect, right? Yeah. He, he had a good idea of where Razy was at, popped it well in advance to sneak up on him, but then Razy takes the bounce pad, and that forces Avec in a position where, well, if I chase him up the bounce pad, he knows exactly where I'm coming from because he gets the sound cue. But if I don't, I will have burned one of my last available abilities, and I get nothing out of it. Wait. Welcome back. Happy to have you rejoin us. Crazy looks really scary, you guys. I think he <laughs> looks real scary. I, I mean, that was a great, great matchup. I mean, map one, obviously pretty decisive in that regard. But I'll tell you what, uh, even even the strength that I feel like we saw out of Avic, uh, I, I put Razy pretty high in terms of uh, the contention to take this thing. He just looks so good right now. It was quite a common thing in both of those maps. We had a, a sort of key turning point that allowed Razy to just sort of push forward. The smallest little marginal thing that you wouldn't really think about that allows Razy to either get stacked, turn the tides, because it was so close. The first map, really close for most of it until like halfway through. This map, very, very similar. You know, again, 3-3. Three, three. And there was that one key point where, boom, you know, here comes Razy and then... Yeah, there was that, th you know, there was that one moment where uh, oh, uh, I, I think Avic thought that maybe Razy hadn't picked up a rail and then all of a sudden there's that rail out of nowhere and I was like, wait, wait a second, what's going on? Um, it, I don't know, just like very, very small things that that have Razy kind of operating on a whole nother level right now. I can't say I predicted a 2-0. I don't think anyone did, really. No, no. I think it's pretty surprising. But it's a testament to how Razy's currently looking, I think. I mean, the both of us were favoring him going into this match to begin with, yeah. but 2-0, yeah. have it be like this. I mean, these were close and hard-fought matches, but still, I think, pretty clear, decisive victories for Razy. Yeah, I, I, and, you know, I, not to, like, speculate going further on, but even Lethal and I were kind of talking about it as watching the matchup, is like, you know, uh, we've seen Razy with this level of strength going into the finals, and that maybe... 
the the second place curse has more to do with the pressure of a finals than it has to do with the journey of getting there. So, you know, I, I don't know if Razy were to play this through uh, in the same fashion that he just did versus Avic. You know, absolutely. He he is hands down someone who could absolutely should be touching the belt right now. It's also a bit of a stamina issue, I think, right? Almost every single time that Razy gets into the grand finals, he makes his way up there from the lower, lower bracket. You're right. So he yeah. starts with a map deficit or has to clear, you know, a double best of three, double best of five. Won't be happening this time. It's just a or just a normal best of seven with a one map advantage for the person from the upper bracket. But it really is a bit of a stamina thing when you have to play that many matches in a row. And has that, I, I, would I, I, we might have to go back and look, but has that typically happened from a quarterfinals perspective or? Semi-finals, as in like getting knocked down to the lower. I mean, I think usually it's it's around this time. Yeah, pff, quarters. I would actually say yeah. usually it's quarters. I yeah. think very often Razy has a tr like a very difficult lower bracket run where he has to beat person after person after person. And on the other hand, you've got say his teammate Wenger or even Rafa just sitting pretty in the upper bracket, leaning yeah. backwards, saying, "All right." So maybe that was like the breakthrough game that he kind mm. of needed, and uh, we'll we'll be able to see. I don't know if we have updated brackets. We might after we turn return from the break, might have to take a look at those. But be curious to see what his next step is to potentially then get into the grand finals. That game won't be played until tomorrow anyway um, because we've got uh, two more quarterfinals, I believe. And then, yeah, and then we'll be going on to the lower. But uh, remarkable matchup. Still kind of shocked that it was a 2-0. I felt early on that there's great possibility we might go to a 2-1, but uh, Racy looking super, super strong. Might be a bit disappointing for Avic, but gosh, he's still looking good too. Uh, there were also just a couple of moments where Razy's confidence and just like some of the rail angles he was willing to take, even against someone like Avic, really impressive, so. I mean, lower bracket exists for a reason. Just because Avic falls short here, there's still a damn good chance that we'll be seeing him anyway. Yep. Uh, and now, someone like Avex down there, a lot of other players are going to be like, uh-oh. Right, Because right. now, you got to get through Avex if you want to make oh, it to yeah. finals day. So yep. that, that's a the final gulag. boss in itself. Yeah. Yep. Fight it out down there. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we return, we're going to come back with another quarterfinal matchup. This time, another champion, Rafa, going up against the players looked pretty strong so far. Maxter, that will be the match when we return. Don't go away. Thank <laughs> you.